Ezekiel 45 continues the theme of restoration by detailing how land should be divided and worship conducted in the restored Israel. It emphasizes God's desire for justice, equity, and holiness, focusing on resource distribution and worship practices. The chapter begins by designating a sacred area exclusively for the sanctuary, the priests and the Levites. It says in verses 3 and 4, Within it, the sanctuary of the most holy place will be located. This area will be wholly set aside for the priests who minister to the Lord in the sanctuary. They will use it for their homes and my temple will be located within it. This setup highlights the importance of worship and holiness as central to the community's identity. Ezekiel 45 also tackles the need for fair leadership mandating that princes must not oppress the people, but ensure fairness in land and resource use. This directive emphasizes God's commitment to just leadership that protects everyone's rights. The chapter details required offerings and feasts underlining the importance of gathering together in worship and the necessity of maintaining purity and devotion in these practices. These aren't just rituals. They're meant to promote a culture of reverence and godly respect. Reflecting this to the New Testament, uh, James 127 reminds us that true religion involves caring for those in distress and keeping oneself uncorrupted by the world. Like Ezekiel's regulations, it calls us to a life of practical holiness and compassion. Ezekiel 45 prompts us to consider how we manage our resources and conduct our worship today. Are we prioritizing justice and holiness in our communities? Are our leaders structured to prevent abuse and promote fairness? This chapter it, it challenges us to strive for a community life that reflects God's kingdom where justice and holiness go hand in hand.